Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian. The date today is June 14th, 2019. In this video lecture, we are going to calculate the required compressed air charge pressure that a firefighter's air tank needs during a certain situation. Uh, this is kind of a complimentary video to the previous Muller Massive Air video that was posted previous to this one. And uh, this is a practical application of the usefulness of understanding the molar mass of air in relationship to the ideal gas law for making a real world calculation, such as calculating the required compressed air pressure charge for a firefighter's air tank. So uh, assume that this is an application we're working with. It is a uh, firefighter plan to enter a smoke filled occupancy using a compressed air tank connected to a sealed mask with output check valve for a time period of 30 minutes, 12 liters per minute of airflow output into mask are required from the tank. Assume the filling station where the air tank is pressurized with compressed air operates at an air temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit and is 2100 feet above mean sea level. Assume that the smoke filled occupancy the firefighter shall enter is also within the same temperature and elevation ranges. What gauge pressure should the firefighter's 19 liter tank be pressurized to? So I've already worked this uh, calculation out. It's 244 PSI gauge of compressed air, and that is calculated by first solving for the atmospheric pressure when at 2100 feet above mean sea level. You can put this 2100 into this constant, subtract it from one to the 2.55876 power times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level, so 13.2, uh, 13.62 PSI of atmospheric pressure when at 2100 feet above mean sea level. If you want to check it by using the metric system, you can enter the PSI value times the conversion to Pascal's times the conversion to ATM's. And so if you take this calculation, 2100 divided by 145.442 minus one to the 5.255876 power, you also calculate 0.9268 atms. One multiply times standard pressure, atmospheric pressure, you'll get 13.62. So that is accurate. That's been proven. We need 12 liters of air per one minute times 30 minutes. So 360 liters of air are required above atmospheric pressure or compressed air. We know the molar mass of air is almost 29 grams per mole, 28.97. We have our ideal gas law formula. So we can start by taking the temperature in the Fahrenheit relative scale, converting it to Celsius, and then converting it to absolute temperature on the metric system, which is Kelvin, 291.33 Kelvins. Next, we take the 360 liters. We know there's a thousand cubic centimeters to a liter of uh, volume. So we can then convert that to cubic centimeters. 1,000 milliliters is also 1,000 cubic centimeters. Get the cube root of 360 times 1,000 cubic centimeters, 71.14 centimeters linear. Divide that into 100 centimeters to a meter linear. That converts it to 0.7114 meters. Then we convert that to uh, feet. 3.28 feet to a meter, 3.22 feet, we cube it. So 12.65 cubic feet is equal to 360 liters of air. Now next we can then go up here and solve for the air density in the US English units, 29 constant times the atmospheric pressure, 13.62, divided by the ideal gas law for air times the Rankine's absolute temperature, which is Fahrenheit plus 460. When we calculate that, we have an air density of 0 0.070, one at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 2100 feet above mean sea level. Okay, now we have uh, the air density in pounds per cubic foot. We calculated the uh, volume of compressed air charge in cubic feet, multiply them out, we calculate 0.8855 pounds of mass air is compressed into the air tank, right? 
We then divide that into uh, the amount of uh, pounds per kilogram to get the mass. So that's 0 0.4025 kilograms mass air. And then there's a thousand grams to one kilogram. So when you multiply it out, it's 402.5 grams mass air. We know that the molar mass of air is 28.97 grams per mole. So when we take 402.5 grams into the molar mass for air, 28.97 grams per mole, this is uh, 402.5 grams divided into one and then divide divided into 28.97 so we get the reciprocal and when we uh, work it out 402.5 grams divided into 28.97 grams per mole 13.9 moles air are compressed into the tank above atmospheric pressure above the existing moles in the tank so that's part of the atmospheric pressure we can add that together right so we got the n for moles of a gas is equal to the absolute pressure in ATMs times the volume of the fixed, the closed tank volume divided into the R constant for ideal gas law multiplied times the uh, absolute temperature in Kelvin. So we have to solve for the P, the pressure. So NRT is equal to PV. So we isolate the P out of that and we're left with uh, NRT divided into V. So NRT divided into V. So we put all these values in, 13.9 moles times the constant R times the absolute temperature divided by uh, liters volume, 17.5 ATM absolute pressure. So that is the gauge plus the atmospheric pressure. We know that one ATM is 14.5. 7 PSI in the U.S. English system of measure, right? So we're, we're, we're dealing with PSI. So right there, we can take 14.7 times 17.5 ATMs, 257.25 PSI A. We subtract the atmospheric pressure from the absolute pressure to get gauge, 243.63 PSI G gauge. So 244, we round it to. And this is what you would pressurize the air tank above atmospheric pressure. So at atmospheric pressure, without any pressurization or compressed air, it would be zero PSIA. You would only have an atmospheric pressure of 13.62. So that's the residual volume. Now you start pressurizing, you start putting the compressed air at the filling station, this PSI gauge pressure will start to rise. So if you pressurize it up to 244, pounds per square inch gauge of compressed air, you will have availability of 12 liters per minute of airflow into a mask for a time period of 30 minutes until all the compressed air charge above atmospheric pressure depletes out and then you're left with zero gauge pressure right at the end of approximately 30 minutes. So, so the easy way to figure out if you have the capacity limit uh, we need 30 minutes of air at 12 liters per minute. That's the average breathing rate of statistical average. You can take up to six liters per breath, but average is like normal breathing is about 12. So you would find that statistical average, 12 liters per minute. And uh, if you pressurize it to this gauge pressure, 244 PSI of air, you will have this much airflow output per minute, 12 liters per minute for a time period of 30 minutes. So this ideal gas law and finding the molar mass of gases is uh, extremely useful for a lot of practical applications. It, this could be uh, argon shielding gas for welding, or this could be natural gas uh, compression for, you know, heating and cooling uh, power. It could be for, you know, compressed natural gas, anything, but you got to get the molar mass of the gas through the chemical structure and then apply it to this ideal gas law for whatever you want. There's a lot of different ways to set this equation up, but this is a practical application. What this physical chemistry and uh, physics application can do out in the real world. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.